Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Tantalus Systems Holdings, Inc., Peter Londa. How are you doing today, Peter? Great, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Really excited to learn more about your company. And I have my first question for you, Peter. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Tantalus Systems Holdings, Inc.? Um, sure. Thank, thanks for the question. And thanks for having us today. It's a privilege to be um, on your program and have an opportunity to um, provide an update to um, investors. Uh, so I was recruited into the company, uh, Tantalus Systems, back in 2014. Uh, so I'm not the founder of the company. I was brought in by the board of directors. Uh, prior to joining Tantalus, I was in the same industry where Tantalus operates today. Uh, and was running a privately held company on behalf of some venture capital firms out of California and in the United States. Um, and fortunately had success in scaling that business up to a point where it was uh, acquired by a, a behemoth public company in the US called Danaher Corporation. Um, our shareholders at the time decided to go that route as opposed to what we've done here at Canalis and going public uh, on the TSX. Um, my Fundamental background ties to initially starting at investment banking, so don't hold that against me. Uh, from there, I, I was uh, pulled out of banking by one of my then clients, which was in the software industry. And so I'm not smart enough to write zeros and ones or code, but I understand um, the power of software and the software model and software business. Um, and so from spending time in software, I ended up working on a project for a technology company in what's called the smart grid space and helping helping utilities leverage technology to modernize their grid. Um, <clears throat> and so through spending time in that industry, that's how I've landed here at Tantalus and have been part of the team here now for seven or eight years. Congratulations on all your success so far. And can you tell us what are some of the milestones Tantalus Systems has set for 2022, which shareholders can look forward to? So, yeah, if I, and if I take a step back on what we accomplished in 2021, um, we're just celebrating effectively our one-year anniversary of being publicly traded. Um, and so last year was very much about accessing the public markets, raising capital to strengthen our balance sheet, working on some key R&D initiatives organically with our own team uh, to scale out our capabilities to our existing customer base. Um, and 2022 is very much about now that we've got that foundation in place, we've got the balance sheet um, behind us, we've got some R&D initiatives that we continue to accelerate on, right? It's all about helping utilities prepare for the electrification of everything while simultaneously being asked to decarbonize everything. And so that creates, from our perspective, a very long trajectory for this business with a balance sheet behind it to accelerate our growth, not only through what we do today, uh, but through targeted opportunities around M&A uh, and strategic growth initiatives through partnerships. And so as investors track us this calendar year, uh, we're very much focused on building out awareness relative to um, our current uh, position in the market and and sort of uh, you know sort of early into the public market or at least early in our public company life, um, trying to ensure investors understand where the value proposition is and where our investment thesis is, and create what we think is a really compelling investment opportunity relative to our share price, which is significantly undervalued relative to current consensus of the five analysts covering our stock. Can you tell us about the management at Tantalus Systems, especially their past success in the public markets? Sure. So we're, we're fortunate. Um, I'll start with our chair uh, is a woman named Laura Formusa, who is among the most accomplished female 
executives in the North American power industry. Um, prior to joining us as chair uh, and retiring, she was CEO of Hydro One, one of the largest utilities um, in Canada, if not North America. And so um, during her time at Hydro One, she was general counsel and then ultimately became CEO. So at, at the highest level of our organization, and our chair is unbelievably experienced, not only in our industry, we support electric utilities, but also the ins and outs of being a publicly traded company. Um, in addition to Laura as chair, uh, another member of our team I'd highlight is George Resnick, our CFO. Um, George is a career uh, CFO of public companies up in Toronto, uh, or up in Canada, excuse me. Um, over the last 20 years, he has supported companies in a CFO capacity that were publicly traded. So his personal experiences as CFO of publicly traded companies over the last 20 years combined. Prior to that, he was at one of the large accounting firms, ran a valuation practice, very helpful for us as we think about M&A opportunities to accelerate our growth um, and, and just has a, a, a world-class um, world class background in terms of the, the reporting capabilities and understanding the ebbs and flow. Um, our general counsel is based here in the US with me. Um, extended experience in terms of corporate practice and securities law, um, very experienced in terms of public company uh, experience. And then other members of our management team uh, have similarly been at large organizations, publicly traded, and then emerging privately held companies like Tantalus prior to us going public. So I think. Overall, we have over 200 combined years of experience wow. in our industry and well over 100 years of experience running, managing, and supporting publicly traded companies. That's a lot of experience. Now, the company recently announced a partnership with Irby Utilities, a subsidiary of Sonpar USA that provides full scope fiber network solutions through its technology and communications business group. Can you tell us what that means for Tantalus Systems? Sure, so when you think about Tantalus, we're building solutions. We're then selling those to electric utilities. That is our target customer base. And to that end, we have about 210 utilities that we support today. We access those utilities through two paths, one of which is our own direct sales team, which in the aggregate between sales and business development is about 15 employees. And then we also access utilities through a sales channel. And within that sales channel, we have roughly 20 organizations that are regionally focused, that have large teams, some, sometimes they're smaller teams, but right, robust teams that are selling directly into utilities and representing Tantalus, facilitating those introductions in some circumstances, reselling our capabilities. Irby is an extension of our channel partner relationships. And where um, that's important is we, in 2021, uh, after going public, announced the launch of our next generation, what we refer to as our True Sense Gateway. It's a device that will get deployed by utilities once we commercialize it that not only helps utilities gain access to granular data around consumption and power quality, but it also will enable a utility to provide broadband services where there may not be a lot of competition or may not even have access to a broadband service provider in a more rural community or smaller communities. And in the US, where the vast majority of our utility customers are located, Surprisingly, about 20% of the population in the United States today does not have prolific access to broadband. And so the electric utilities, particularly co-ops and municipal owned utilities are stepping into that void. Our goal is to bring a device to those utilities that extends our relationship with them and enables them to provide more services. Irby specializes in helping utilities roll out fiber networks and fiber capabilities to not only deliver power, but also deliver broadband services. And so having Irby select and join our channel, select analysts and join our channel um, partnerships is, is a great 
sign of confidence in what we're doing. And it will help us accelerate revenue from the new product that we're bringing into the market. And we expect that product to be commercially available towards the end of this year and certainly into 2023. Wow. I can't wait to see that happen and see you guys really achieve those goals and evolve. Now, if Tantalus Systems were to compare itself to its competitors in the tech space that are focused on making our aging energy grids into more multi-directional grids, what would you say sets you guys apart from other companies in this sector? So I think there are, so thanks. It's a, it's a great question. Um, and we could spend an hour on it. Um, and so if my passion comes through on it, um, just feel free to step in and cut me off. But I, I really could um, speak on this one for a while. There, there are a couple of things uh, if I try to boil them down, not necessarily in priority order. Um, first and foremost, um, you'll see the sign behind me, Purpose Built. Yes. We are very much focused from our chair all the way through our organization, right? In building solutions and making business decisions at Tantalus around helping solve some of the most complex challenges that the utility industry faces today. Um, and so that in and of itself, that focus and that dedication, especially with respect to the market segment that we focus on, I think is a differentiator. Um, second, from a technology perspective, we, and, and let me backtrack on that, on, on that first one, we hear a lot around the cultural fit, right, of our organization alongside the utilities organizations where we develop multi-decade relationships. So that really, that encapsulates one, is our, is our purpose and how we mesh and how we establish what are really multi-decade relationships with the utilities we support. The second thing from a technology perspective, we were the first company to bring edge computing into this sector. And what I mean by that, I'm gonna hold up a device in my hand for a little show and tell. We were the first to build, this is like the guts of your iPhone. And we figured out how to add edge computing with back then a Linux-based operating system under the glass of a meter, inside a load control switch, into distribution automation equipment. And within that device, we have multiple processors to support parallel processing of data, which allows us to very granularly help utilities have visibility and situational awareness as to what's actually happening on the grid. Where's power on? Where is it off? Basic. How are consumers changing their behavior patterns? Um, how are things unfolding with power quality, right, which is a big area of focus for utilities? What does that mean for the assets that they deploy? And it's, it's the technology itself and the access to that granular data that then leads us into a third area of differentiation, which is predictive capabilities. Because we gather today 30 billion data points on consumption, and power quality across 210 utilities, we are at the forefront of bringing analytics capabilities into those utilities to help them predict and proactively avoid power outages massively inconvenient in today's society. Even worse, failed equipment that can lead to a forest fire, right? devastating in terms of the news that we consistently see, not only now in the summer months, but even in the winter months out west. We can help them plan for aging infrastructure and aging employees, right? Um, last but not least, that predictive capability and where we get very excited even with our announcement of our acquisition earlier this week is how do we help utilities prepare for the phenomenal impact that will unfold in terms of resiliency and reliability of the grid as people adopt purchase and start to leverage electric vehicles. And where we see a tremendous catalyst for growth, and this is not short term, this is five, seven and 10 years trajectory, is as people purchase electric vehicles and as investors focus on the EV space, think about the cascading impact that has to utilities. All of a sudden they're being asked to deliver more power at different locations at different times of the day. 
And in some circumstances, if the F-150 Lightning can really discharge into a home to power lights and power appliances, I think about the cascading impact that has to the utility operationally and financially. And so based on our heritage and culture, based on our technology, the devices we're putting into the field today, based on the predictive tools we're building from software and acquiring through our acquisition we announced earlier this week, right, we're at the forefront of helping utilities prepare for what otherwise is a true inflection point on their reliability and resiliency. Well, thank you for your work because it seems like we're going to really need this going into this electrification world. I, I, by 2030, it seems like 50% of the cars on the road are going to be electric vehicles. So there's going to uh, be a major need for what you're talking about, like on a global scale. Here yeah, so at Rich we, TV Live, our members are all over the world and they're investors and, and, and they really like to understand the fundamentals and the meat and potatoes and the, and the bare bones of the company. So one of the questions we love to ask is, the understanding of the share structure. Can you go through the capital structure of the Tantalus systems for our viewers and how you plan on attracting more institutional and retail investors? Sure. Um, thanks. And I, I hope I wasn't too long-winded on the differentiation question. Um, in terms of our capitalization, um, when we went public last year, um, we established a fairly straightforward um, cap structure. It is 100% common stock. Um, incremental to the shares that are outstanding, we have a stock option plan to incentivize employees um, and provide them with compensation in the form of stock option to align their day-to-day -day to our shareholders. Um, and in terms of ownership, um, ballpark, about 80 to 85% of our stock today um, that number may not be exactly precise, but it's a close approximation, um, are held by institutional investors. Wow. Whether that's some of our existing investors um, when we went public from venture capital funds or family offices um, to investors that we've secured in raising approximately 20 million Canadian dollars as a public company from very large pension funds, family offices, uh, and institutional funds that focus in the small cap space. Um, the balance of that is then retail. Um, and so the curious thing is on the one hand, it's great that we have that much institutional ownership in the immediate term, it's, it's impact a little bit on our liquidity because we don't have a lot of float. And we don't have a lot of people in and out of the stock every single day. So as we um, continue to mature and now in our second year of being publicly traded, right, the goal is really to expand awareness to attract more investors into the stock. Um, and I think we'll do that both through um, and see that volume increase through day-to-day -day trading uh, as people become more aware of what we do and the investment thesis and opportunity behind our company. Um, but then also, as we think about some strategic initiatives and potentially need to access more capital, there might be opportunities through a prospectus-based financing. Um, those will be the find use of proceeds and you know, hard to predict when and if, but. And those would be other opportunities that we'll create for investors to move in. Fantastic. And if there was one thing that you would want shareholders to know about Tantalus Systems today, what would that be? Um, so I, I may be jaded on it, um, but from where I sit as CEO of the company, um, we, are, we have a track record as a team of executing towards our plan. Um, Within that, we are positioning our organization to truly be at the forefront of this onslaught of electric vehicles, solar panels, and a fundamental changing of the electric grid. Um, and as we think about the importance of electricity, right, great investment opportunity, that's a long-term opportunity around digitizing and modernizing the electric infrastructure and the electric grid. And so we're, we're in the thick of it with a track record of success, a thriving and growing user community of utilities and a team that's been able to identify, continue to identify paths to scale this business. And so we think we're in a great spot. Um, we think relative to where share prices today creates a very compelling investment thesis and investment opportunity for investors that believe in a long-term strategy and, and that's what we're executing towards. 
What is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions about Tantalus Systems Holdings, Inc.? Yeah, th thanks, Rich. So we have within our website, tantalus.com, um, there is an investor's landing page. Within that landing page, um, all of our filings are available um, and, and fairly readily accessible. Um, incremental to that, you'll, you'll see the list of analysts that are covering us with email addresses for them to the extent you're interested in getting access to some of their research. And then uh, to your specific question, we have a, uh, a contact email link that runs into um, the team that's responsible for our investor relations. And by all means, um, you know, we're, we're, we're available and, and um, willing to answer questions from investors trying to learn more about our business, particularly as we try to expand the awareness uh, of GRID, our ticker, and, uh, and the stock and the investment opportunity. That's right. GRID is the ticker, G-R-I-D, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I do believe this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Thank you for joining us today. The CEO of Tantalus Systems Holdings, Inc., Peter Londa. Rich, thanks for having us. I, uh, I'll look forward to hopefully having an opportunity to come back and visit with you and, and provide updates to uh, investors. So really, really appreciate your, uh, your inclusion of us today. I appreciate you being on our show. We'd love to invite you back anytime you have any big breaking news, anything you want to discuss. We'd love to invite you back on the show. And for those of you guys that are watching, if you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. Remember, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching everybody and have a nice day. Have a great day. Thanks, Rich. All right. That was good. One.